I see what you're doing there. Don't try and hide it from me, okay? I know exactly what you're trying to do there. You got a lump that's popped up, I'm guessing, because hey, you clicked into this video. And there you are, squeezing it. Looking at it and squeezing at it is not gonna make it suddenly, spontaneously resolve. If you've got a lump or a bump, there's a good chance you're wondering, is this a lipoma or is this one of those sebaceous cysts, otherwise known as epidermoid cysts? They can be sneaky and maybe confuse you, you're not sure what you've got, but uh, let's discuss, let me save you from the Google rabbit hole, or these days, the AI, what do I have wrong with me rabbit hole, which will have you believing you've got some deadly sarcoma and you only have like 30 seconds left to live. Good thing you're in this video because we're gonna save you some unnecessary anxiety. First of all, take a deep breath because both of these bumps, lipoma and sebaceous cyst, as it's commonly referred to, they're not cancerous they're not dangerous they're not gonna kill you all right they can be uncomfortable all right they may bother you in the way that they look get in the way of certain things but no one ends up in the grave because of a lipoma all right so now that we got that out of the way you can take a deep breath maybe you're already getting ready to click out of this video because that's all you needed to know I'm not gonna die today all right but please stick around to find out some more scintillating details all right lipoma lipoma is is a benign, again, non-cancerous little tumor that spontaneously develops from the fat cells, the adipocytes. And typically this happens below the surface of the skin. It can be pretty deep down in there, like on your thighs, your rear end. They can even happen on your face, like your forehead. They're firm and they have this rubbery texture. You can put your fingers around them if they are up closer to the surface in areas where you have thin skin, but in other areas, you might only feel them by kind of moving your hand over the surface of the skin. You can feel them down under there. Typically, they are not painful, although if they encroach on a neighboring nerve, they might be uncomfortable. They might actually be painful in those situations, but for the most part, they don't really bother people. Here's the thing about a lipoma that will just clue you in right away that is probably what you're dealing with. If you look at the skin surface, it looks completely normal. There's nothing on the surface of the skin, it's just normal skin. Lipomas can be pretty large, okay? They can get pretty large. They can range anywhere from one to 10 centimeters in diameter, so that's pretty big. Especially, you know, you're talking about the forehead, it might look like you got a big goose egg on your forehead. Now, the other thing about them is that they don't rupture, they don't burst. They're, they're solid little rubbery nodules of well-differentiated mature fat cells. They they don't burst, they don't rupture, and because of that, they don't cause these issues of inflammation in the surrounding skin and subsequent scar formation. You may have one lipoma, or in some cases, you may have multiple. Around five to 10% of people who develop lipomas will have more than one. So comment below, are you in the five to 10% of uh, well-differentiated fat cell tumor makers? Both men and women get lipomas equally, all right? Any age group, can develop a lipoma, but they're most common in your 40s to 60s. There are certain rare underlying genetic conditions that are accompanied by a tendency to make lipomas, such as Gardner syndrome. Most people are otherwise healthy. They're not really associated with any health problems. Although people who have diabetes, obesity, high lipids may be more likely to develop them, but they're not caused by having excess adipose tissue per se or diet. They're likely caused by, at least the going theory is, they're caused by some sort of trauma that triggers uh, an inflammatory cascade that stimulates immature fat cells to differentiate into mature fat cells and form this little rubbery egg, if you will. Now let's flip the script on over to another lump and bump, which you may be wondering, is that one I have? People like to call these sebaceous cysts. They're also called epidermoid cysts, epidermal inclusion cysts. These are 
a cyst, so there's a wall there within the skin. And it's basically a cyst that instead of being rubbery, firm, and solid, it's full of keratin, which is the protein that your skin makes. It's like trying to make skin and it doesn't do a very good job and it makes it into the sac that has formed. Now, epidermoid inclusion cysts, they are cysts that form within the pore, within the hair follicle. And like lipomas, they can happen pretty much anywhere, but most commonly might be on the trunk. They also might develop on the head. Here is where they, they differ from lipomas. A lipoma is gonna be mobile, I meaning you can kind of jiggle it back and forth under there. An epidermoid cyst is fixed. It's within the skin, it's fixed, it's not rubbery. And here's another real key distinguishing feature. A epidermoid cyst or sebaceous cyst, however you wanna name it, it's typically flesh colored, looks like your surrounding skin. A little bit smaller usually, you know, maybe one to two centimeters. Um, and it's got a punctum, which is a hole, because again, these arise within essentially the pore, the hair follicle. And oftentimes, in most cases, there will be um, some little keratin material coming out of that pore opening. It'll look like a giant blackhead, especially if it's small on your face. You might think, I've got this huge blackhead, but it's actually a cyst below the surface of the skin. There's a little sac in the skin. You don't have a sac with lipoma. You just have a little egg of fat. The other thing, those of you who like to squeeze and, and pop and, and, the, and the like, with an epidermoid cyst, if you squeeze it, you will get this sometimes sort of cheesy like foul smelling material that comes out. And that may feel really gratifying in the moment, but unfortunately it doesn't do anything because that cyst just keeps trying to make skin and continues to fill back up. Now, epidermoid cysts, in contrast to lipomas, they can rupture. Lipomas don't rupture. You know, you can squeeze them. It's not good for you to do that. It's not helping anything, but you're not gonna burst a lipoma because it's, you know, firm, it's solid. It's not gonna just explode on you in, in, uh, below the surface of the skin. An epidermoid cyst, on the other hand, can rupture either because you have manipulated it in an effort to squeeze out the material or it's gotten too full and it's ruptured. And once it ruptures, the problem is the wall gets kind of leaky, creates a lot of inflammation around the cyst and it can lead to scar formation, which we'll get to why that is no bueno in a moment. So now that you kind of have some idea of how to tell the difference between these two, remember a lipoma is below the surface of the skin, it's firm, it's rubbery, there's no surface change, you can move it around a bit. Whereas an epidermoid cyst is fixed, there is a punctum at the surface of the skin, you can get stuff out of it. And in contrast to a lipoma, an epidermoid cyst can rupture and cause inflammation, scarring. All right, what can be done about these? Whether you have a lipoma or you have an epidermoid cyst, let's talk lipoma. Number one thing that you can do is to do nothing. And I know you're probably annoyed to hear that, but some people are rejoicing because they hate doctors, they hate the idea of having to have any kind of procedure, and they don't really care about the lipoma. They're more pressed to know, like, is this dangerous? It's not. It's not. Lipomas, they grow very slowly, and they reach about maximum 10 centimeters in um, size, which is pretty big, but they don't just like keep growing and keep growing and keep growing and overtake your entire body, all right? So if, you, if you've been down that anxiety rabbit hole of your whole body turning into a lipoma, it's not gonna happen, all right? They can get large, but they're not going to, they're not going to be something that overtakes large structures. A lipoma though is not gonna rupture. So if you wanna get rid of it, you gotta see your dermatologist and they've gotta excise it. It's a pretty straightforward in and out procedure. Getting rid of a lipoma, it doesn't likely come back, all right? They're pretty easy to remove in one foul swoop, but doesn't prevent you from making more. And again, if you're somebody whose genetics are such that you make these, you might make more again in the future and you may already have more than one, all right? If you're in that five to 10%, that's just that's just the way, that's just the way you are. Epidermoid cysts or sebaceous cysts, on the other hand, they are a little bit ugh, more of a, well, if this, then that. What I mean by that is, okay, if they're small and they're not bothering you, you don't have to do anything. However, if you're 
somebody who likes to squeeze and manipulate, do be aware that you can cause the cyst to rupture. And once that happens, it's gonna come back, okay? You don't get rid of it by bursting it. It comes back, but this time it comes back surrounded by scar tissue, which makes it even more difficult to excise. And that is the treatment once you decide that you want one of these removed or that it becomes large and continues to fill and fill and it becomes very tense and maybe a risk for rupturing on its own without you even squeezing it. So in order to remove a, a sebaceous cyst, your dermatologist has to get in there. There's a wall, okay, um, below within the skin. That whole wall has to come out. If pieces, parts of the wall are left behind, which is more likely if there's a bunch of scar tissue. If there's a bunch of scar tissue, it becomes increasingly difficult to properly remove it. But provided all of the wall comes out, it shouldn't recur. Um, however, if, if some of the wall is left behind, it will recur. And once it recurs, you know, it's like even more difficult to get in there and properly take it out. Squeezing, attempting to pop, take a sledgehammer to, it's not going to do anything but cause you problems. In the case of a lipoma, it's not going anywhere. In the case of an epidermoid inclusion cyst, you can cause rupture, which again, inflammation, scarring, and also a risk of skin infections. The cyst becoming secondarily infected with bacteria. So you don't want that. I mean, because then it's even more complicated. Your derm has to likely prescribe an antibiotic to clear up the infection before going in and removing it is even possible. So just something to keep in mind to ward off the temptation to pop that out. Again, friendly reminder, neither of these are deadly. No one's dropping dead from these, but they are annoying and they are a nuisance for the individual who makes them oftentimes, but that's how to tell the difference. And at the end of the day, it kind of is up to you how much it bothers you, if you want it removed or not. The size in the case of an epidermoid cyst can really, you know, be more of a, of a determining factor in whether or not it needs to come out. But doing nothing is actually an option for both of these. And Anyway, that's about all I wanted to say with regards to the differences between these two. Uh, I really hope this video was informative uh, to those of you who may be struggling with something like this. It's not fun, especially if you can't get in to see a dermatologist or even your primary care doctor these days, very challenging. So I hope this helped perhaps ease your mind uh, and hopefully motivate you to not squeeze those cysts. Now, if you are just feeling all fired up about the sebaceous cysts, uh, don't you worry, sweetheart, because this channel, this channel, you know, it's essentially a skincare rave on this channel where, I mean, everybody is up and down and, and you know, there's glow sticks and everything. So on the end slate, I actually have for you, are you ready? I actually have for you another video all about specifically the sebaceous cysts. So click on that video if you want to keep feeling alive, but I hope this one was informative to you guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.